Welcome to this episode of Reaper TV. In this fifth installment for the Building Your Home Studio for Free series, we're going to be taking a look at some key plugins that you need to have and some other plugins that are really just quite nice to have when you're dealing with EQing and just starting to work on the music that you create. All of these, as with everything else we've discussed in the previous videos, are completely free. There are commercial versions which give you extra features that you can purchase if you like those free versions, but these are not crippled or cut down versions in any way. They still perform amazingly well. So let's take a look at some of those plugins now. We'll look at how to install them, where to download them from, and a basic overview of what they're going to provide you. So let's take a look at all that right now. So to start off with, it's always worth taking a look in the digital audio workstation that you choose to see what free plugins are available as part of that package. Now in this example where I've used Reaper, there are a whole range of free plugins, EQs and so on which are very very good and I'm sure any digital audio workstation you choose, whether that's a commercial option or a completely free option, will still give you some basic building block tools to get you up and running. But it's always good to have additional options and there are some very, very good ones available for completely free. We're going to start off by taking a look at a specific plugin and some additional options we have available to us from Tokyo Dawn Labs. Now, the Tokyo Dawn Labs has a range of free and commercial options available. You can see we've got the TDR Nova and the Gentleman's Edition. The Nova is completely free and gives you a six band EQ, four selectable bands and a low pass and a high pass filter, whereas the Gentleman's Edition gives you extra facilities. You can see we've also got additional free plugins that we can download and we'll take a look at those in more detail in future videos. But for now, I'm going to show you the process of just simply downloading this and setting it up and then starting to use it in your projects. So the first thing we're going to do is let's take a look at downloading the TDR Nova. Just click on that to take us through to the page that gives us information about this particular product. It's worth sitting down, taking a look over this, seeing exactly what it offers you, checking out a couple of the videos to get you started to see exactly how you can work with this particular plugin and get you up and running quite quickly. We're using this incredibly powerful and frankly worth its weight in gold plugin very, very quickly. So let's start off by downloading this. You can see we've got a couple of options available. We've got a Windows with and without an installer, and we have a Mac package. If you're more comfortable just downloading this and setting it up, dropping the relevant files into your VST folder, by all means do that. If you're not that comfortable, choose the Windows installer version, and then just follow the instructions on screen to do exactly what's needed to install this on your system. For me, I'm going to choose the no installer option. I'm going to simply click on that. Accept and download the agreement. Obviously, read through this, make sure you're happy with it before you accept it. So we'll say, yep, we'll have that. If you want to, you can subscribe to the email newsletter and be kept up to date with new information. For now, I'm going to click on the X on that. And once this is finished downloading, it'll open up and you can see we now have a folder for the TDR Nova. If I open that up, I've got a couple of options, including a manual, the change log, and some license information. And I can choose between the AAX or the VST version of this plugin. So I'm going to use the VST2. So if I expand that, you can see I've got an option for Windows 32 and for the X64 version. So I'm going to use the 64 bit version. So all I'm going to do is double click on that, and you can see that gives me the TDR Nova DLL file. So all I need to do is drag that into my VST folder and I can close those down and if I go back to Reaper all I need to do is go into the preferences come down to my VSTs and just rescan that'll just check to find the existence of any new plugins if I need to I can clear the cache and I click OK to that and I should find now that if I go to my effects browser you can see I've got everything set up with TDR and I now have the TDR Nova already installed, ready for me to start working. So let's start off now we have this installed by taking a look at the interface and having a brief overview of what it does. And we'll apply it to a track and just give it a quick test through. So what I'm going to do is just simply drag this up, drop an instance onto the guitar track that I want. That'll open up the interface for me. And let's just bring the interface in. And let's take a look at what we've got available to us. So as we can see, we have a typical looking EQ. 
but this is a parallel dynamic equalizer which if you're not familiar with dynamic equalizers they work in a slightly different way to a standard eq when you work with a standard equalizer it affects the frequency range based upon the type of curve or the high pass low pass filter that you apply to it and that's always in effect but the way you can use a parallel or dynamic equalizer is that you can actually specify that when it hits a certain threshold that that eq effect starts to take effect if it doesn't meet that e that threshold then the effect is either lessened or non-existent so you can have a lot more control over the way that you EQ your actual audio using something like this. Now I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail with this particular plugin. We'll take a look at this in a lot more depth in a dedicated video just to working with this. But I'm just going to go over the interface quickly for you and give you some basic understanding of exactly what it can do. So as you can see, we have four EQ options available to us. We can also switch on a high pass and a low pass filter. So if we activate that, you can see it puts our low pass filter in there and the same with the sorry, the high pass filter and the same with the low pass filter. We can specify what frequency range is actually called into effect there. So you can see we've got 15 hertz. We can change that to anything we want. So we can say that we want this to come into effect at 30 hertz and add that in there and you can see that adjusts accordingly and then we can specify the slope and you can see we have a choice of four different options whereas the commercial version has additional options to allow you to control this so you can see we can affect the actual curve so the roll off of the EQ that we're applying to that so you have a range of control there and you can do the same then with the the low pass filter you can see we have the same information available so we can have a nice smooth roll off a slight roll off or we can go very very quick and have a real sharp cut off and again we can turn those on and off we can then choose the different kinds of eq curves we want to work with we've got a bell curve and you can see you have additional options we can adjust the cue the frequency the gain there we can specify the threshold that this eq will start to take effect as you can see this is turned off by default but you can simply click it and that'll open up the option so it'll work in a very similar fashion to a compressor you specify the threshold before it kicks in the ratio of that sort of effect and then you can have the attack and the release of each individual band so you can see at the moment we're looking at band one if we select the next one we now have independent controls for each one of those which we can enable and disable just by simply selecting it and enabling it delete disabling it we can also bypass this we can turn on and off any of these frequency bands and we can change any of the, the actual types simply by clicking on the option we want we can drag these and as you see as we drag it the gain and the frequency will all adjust dynamically on screen for us or we can use the controls themselves to do this manually select the different kinds of curves frequency the Q and so on and again we can enable or disable the threshold on there one of the other things we have available to us we can actually mix the dry signal and the wet signal by just using this mixer control again we can turn these things on and off we can also control the amount of gain that's applied to this particular frequency so we can adjust that independently of any of the other frequencies that are available so we have a whole range of options available to us there. We can also come in and you can see we have a, a range of different predefined presets that we can choose or we can actually save some of our own. We can A-B test those so we can simply apply two different EQ curves and then we can see which one sounds the best. And you can see we can control whether we've got a precise so it's, it's the best quality or the economy sort of section. We can run in stereo, mono, some difference left and right internal source the type of analyzer we want to work with we also have the help we can control some of the settings on there and finally we have the information which will tell us about the actual product itself and we can bypass it so it's a pretty good looking EQ so I've now reset everything back to its default and we'll just run this track we'll play this it's been a guitar track and we'll take a look at what the EQ allows us to do. So we'll just do a rough EQ on there.
So as you can see, it gives us the normal control that we have available in, in typical EQ. It's a very nice looking, easy to operate EQ. There's a lot of extra little functionality in there that we're not going to really touch upon in this video, but we will in a future video where I'll go into a lot more depth on how you can use this and some of the keyboard shortcuts and the way that you can set things up to work as a sort of uh, parametric, sorry, a dynamic EQ. But what I will do before I close this video is just give you a quick demonstration of when you switch on the threshold and you start to use this as a, a dynamic EQ, how that kind of manifests itself inside this interface. So let's take a look at that now. So hopefully what you can see from the demonstration is when we switch on the ability to use dynamic EQ, that when the threshold is hit, then the EQ is being applied with a set ratio with an attack and a release time and the amount of gain that we're applying to it. But it only actually triggers it when it enters that threshold value. So anything before that is not actually being EQ'd. Anything that's inside that value is being EQ'd. So I'm sure you can kind of see that there's benefits of using this kind of EQ as opposed to a standard EQ to every frequency that you specify and it's on all the time. Like I say, I'm going to go through this in a lot more detail, but what I would suggest is download a copy of the Nova, the free version of it, set it up in the way that I've shown you, and test it out because it really is a great free EQ plugin. And the fact that it's a dynamic EQ and you can apply it in different fashion to what you would normally with your standard EQ opens up even more doors once you start to get comfortable with using it. 
Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's another piece of free software that you can download, install, test it out on your mixes. And if you like it, really get stuck into using it and getting the best out of it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you found this video useful to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.